Good morning, traders in Asia. I uh, hope everyone had a nice weekend. This is Privateer FX. Looking at some charts from last week. Kind of a uh, review of last the, the, some of the weekly and daily charts. And we're also looking at uh, any event risk coming up here in the next... Uh, the next few hours to a few days, uh, some pretty interesting developments. The <laughs> the ABC story that caused the huge risk off move that we saw in uh, in New York on Friday turned out to be completely retracted. Let me see if I can get these charts here in place where we. Uh, you can take a look and see some of the price action because it was interesting. Uh, Friday had a you know pretty pretty big risk off move uh, that lasted you know longer than normal. We thought this one was it. We were really really short of uh, dollar yen and S and P's and Nasdaq and everything else and anything you know risk off related. Um, Let's go back here. Let's just take a look at a five minute just so you can see some of this price action. So up from 112.80, the news came out that, uh, you know, some negative Trump news about him being involved in the Russian investigation and that Mike Flynn was going to testify against him. This was completely, uh, and I'm sure you've already seen this on the uh, on your Twitter and on your news feeds, but... You know, here was the move from 112.80 down to 111.40 was a low. We had, we did have some support at 111.25.30. Uh, just missed buying that dip. Came back up. S&Ps rallied back up throughout the day, and closed. You know, a, a little bit lower. But you can see, you know, you can see here dollar yen, pretty much closed unchanged on the day. It's this yellow line here, and uh, let's take a look at where things are here on the open in Asia. Closed down at 112.16, we've gapped open higher. Like this is a, a pretty massive gap actually, up to 112.80, you know, and we've, we've just barely taken, let's go to like a longer term chart here, but and some of the Fibonacci stuff, but you can see here, so we closed, we closed here in dollar yen We opened up here, 112.80. Took out these old 112.88 highs. Highs been 89. A little bit of a falsy. Back down to 112.73. So risk is on here in Asia uh, on the uh, the ABC retraction of the the Mike Flynn testifying against Trump or naming Trump or naming a senior White House official or, you know, this BS. It's, we were, you know, we were not really buying into this whole story on Friday. And, uh, uh, you know, I think a lot of people ended up going home short risk on the weekend just in case this thing blew up and it turned out to be complete BS. So, you know, steady as she goes we should get over to the uh the stocks and see how things open up here in asia gaps and there's just gaps in risk risk products everywhere so here's your s p 500 close at 2642.75 we open up here you know 12 points higher and uh you know, you could take a look at anything. Nikkei up almost a percent. It was up over a percent at one point. NASDAQ up about half a percent. Same deal. So I'll be curious to see on, you know, during the New York trading hours in Europe if we, you know, if we fill these gaps. But this is kind of the blow off top type scenario that we're looking for this month. We become very cautious on risk in January. And there's some voodoo stuff that we look at, some seasonal patterns, some 
cycle patterns, some uh, other things that we've you know come across over the you know 25 years or so we've been in the business, and uh, we're definitely be, will become very cautious and looking for a, a decent correction into you know the early part of 2018. I do think that this could just continue to grind higher. Let's take a look at uh, Bitcoin, which, you know, remember we talked about this last week. We had the 25% correction here from 11,500-ish down to 8,600, and then, you know, straight back up. And now you can see here we've, we are making uh, new all-time highs. Here's a kind of an ugly uh, four-hour, here's the four-hour, this is an ugly four-hour candle not really sure why it sold back off, but we did we did take out these old highs of eleven thousand five hundred, got up to just shy of twelve thousand, reverse down. We're kind of back to unchanged on the day. Pull up the daily chart, slightly positive day, but again, like a couple of dojis, a lot of green bars. Let's go over to one of my favorite charts, the weekly. Can you say parabolic? The monthly. <laughs> you literally cannot find a chart ever that looks like this. Peter Brandt, who's a uh, old school technician, classic technical analyst, has been in the market for 40, 50 years, something like that. Old school guys on Real Vision. Really sharp guy, understands risk management. Put out this tweet, I think we talked about this last week, where he's never seeing he's never seen a chart like this. He put it on log scale and just to you know, it, it, it is just something that he's never come across. And he's you know, he's traded through bubbles and busts and He's pretty much seen it all in his uh, 40 or 50 year career. Let's pop over here to the reversals. I got some weekly charts up here. Aussie dollar, kind of a doji week. Let's go back, and take a look at the daily. Very, very bullish bar here. Outside reversal day higher, but bullish engulfing, whatever you want to call it. Aussie yen, same chart, bullish engulfing. That's a week, weekly chart. Dailies, you know, several up days in a row. S&Ps we looked at, big reversal higher day, gap open higher, half percent. On the positive, you know, Trump's not getting implicated, Trump's not going to get uh, impeached. So that you know that you know the risk is definitely on. Take a look at euro yen. Uh, reversal lower day. The weekly, however, is still positive. We've had this horizontal here at 134.50, massive level. Went up there again last week. Failed. Got a, kind of a triple top forming. Triple bottom for that matter. Big range. I wrote this six weeks ago, 200-week moving average under here. This has to resolve itself. It cannot. It almost looks like there's a double no-touch exotic option here where it can't get outside of this range. When it breaks, be ready because this thing is going to go 5% either higher or lower depending on a clean break of these ranges. So... We're watching that currency very closely, and again, we're you know we are looking for some moves into you know probably a little bit of a grind higher for the month of December in risk and risk assets, and uh, expecting a correction in, in early Q1. Uh, here's the Kiwi dollar chart, the daily outside reversal day higher barely market's still very short we'll take a look at the CFTC 
data and report on that tomorrow to see where the positioning is. And uh, here's a strolling end chart. You know, this is a perfect risk risk on risk off currency. <coughs> Positive Brexit developments throughout the week. British pound was one of the strongest performers. The sterling yen, I think, was the number one strongest currency pair of the week. Again, this you know this looks like we got these highs here at 152, 153-ish, 152, 152.50-ish. Looks like we want to kind of take these out. You know, this currency here. If we uh, take a look at the fibs and we go back. <coughs> quite a way because this is a, a weekly chart so we're going back to June 2015 this very big picture of this one look where we're stalling people don't believe in Fibonacci's believe in them they work here's the one-third 152 ish we can break through this and close through it on a week or even a couple days. I have no problem calling for this old high here, which was the Brexit high, right here, June 2016, all the way up here to 160. This would be a perfect place, perfect target for, you know, higher sterling yen, back to the Brexit highs, and, you know, this could be great fade in that early Q1 where we think risk is going to roll over and start trading lower. Sterling Yen will be a very good vehicle to express a risk-off view. So anyhow, uh, Bitcoin, just amazing, just watching this chart. Eventually, it will end in massive tears. You can overlay this with every other bubble. It will end in massive tears. And the 25% sell-off that we saw last week, I think, was a, you know, let's take a look at the shorter term again, just so you can see the sell-off that we had here. This all happened. This is a four-hour chart. This all happened very quickly. You know, within an hour. Just be prepared for 50% moves, 75% moves off these recent swings. I, like I, here, here we are already. I have to, I have to get rid of this, uh, this Fibonacci sequence. And now we can take a look at this one. We can draw a new one to today's high, all-time high in Bitcoin. And we're talking 90, 94.50 is the first third coming back down. That's a, you know, this is a pretty good swing here back from middle of November, which we've seen this huge run up. You see bars like this and you start to worry. I think the longs will start to worry a little bit about the sustainability of the uptrend. So keep an eye on this. This actually could be a good barometer for risk in general. And if we do get this early Q1 risk off, equity correction, bonds rallying, gold rallying, Bitcoin correcting lower, because the millennials we all know are, they're not investing in gold. They're not really investing too much in the FANG stocks. They are heavily evolved in the cryptocurrency space. And uh, had a conversation with two kids in their 20s today, and they were they overheard me talking about Bitcoin with some some colleagues of mine. And the one kid said, "I bought Bitcoin last week at ten thousand." For the first time, this kid's 25 years old. If we're not approaching a top, then 
you know, I, I'd be completely shocked because I, I, I do think when you, you get some of these millennials involved in this stuff and they, they're buying things that go up 10% in an hour, it is very reminiscent of what I saw, what we all experienced back in the late 90s buying Pets.com that's now bankrupt and Netscape and some of these other browsers that are no longer. So the charts look very similar. And, you know, we've been through it all. We've experienced it. So I would be very careful if you are a millennial and you're, you know, you're bullish cryptocurrencies. I, I do get the, I agree that the blockchain technology is probably here to stay. I'm yet to be convinced that Bitcoin is the best instrument to be involved with long term. Netscape was one of the first, the first internet browsers. Anyone have a Netscape account anymore? No. So competition comes, you know, comes up pretty quickly. It's fierce competition. And uh, I can see Bitcoin kind of following the same path of a Netscape. Anyhow, uh, let's take a look at the calendar quick. Sorry, this is a little bit longer, but it is the weekend uh, preview for next week. Not much going on today. We do have um, the RBNZ. Governor Spencer speaks tomorrow and the RBA meeting, which uh, is expected unchanged at 1.5%. So not a whole lot in the next 24 hours. Keep an eye out for us on the... European Open, you'll hear from my colleagues, and good luck trading today. Let's see if we can fill some of these gap opens that we, uh, that we put in. All the best, Jerry.